What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another weekly update. So there's lots of interesting stories to go over here this week. The first is a report about how the Super will be getting a four-cylinder turbocharged version for the new one here coming, you know, for the 2020 model year most likely. So um, this is a couple of different uh, sources of information that uh, reported this. So first off, the chief engineer of the Supra confirmed it's a road and track at Goodwood uh, during an interview. Um, and this was also leaked out uh, uh, supposedly with a ZF eight speed automatic document uh, within ZF that leaked out that showed um, this engine. And so in addition to confirming there will be a four cylinder turbocharged version, it also showed it's going to have 262 horsepower Power, supposedly um, versus the 335 horsepower that is supposedly indicated on those documents for the six cylinder version of the Supra. But um, and the chief engineer did say they are doing a four cylinder version. He confirmed that. Um, and he also said it'll be lighter with much better weight distribution and sharper turn in. He also said, I guess uh, the person interviewing him uh, was talking about, so what do you think about people doing two Jay Z swaps into the new Supra? And he said, please buy the four cylinder. It will be cheaper. <laughs> um, and that's it. So maybe I'm hoping, you know, the two Jay Z fits and it'll, uh, you know, be a pretty easy swap. Who knows? But anyway, it'll be cool to see they're doing a four cylinder version especially um, if it has 262 horsepower or so because um, you know everyone that wanted a turbo BRZ uh, the Supra seems to be very similar in size to the 86 obviously it looks like from the uh, you know at Goodwood it looked like it had you know still the BMW interior and it'll definitely be more expensive so um, you know it's just gonna come down to how badly you want a faster small Toyota um, but uh, that's it sounds like you know you're gonna have basically a turbo BRZ here with this new Supra in four-cylinder trim but you know chances are it'll probably be over 40 grand I'm guessing um, we'll have to wait and see it might be cheaper but if you make it too cheap then you're stepping on the toes of the 86 and then you put that car at risk of being killed off although Toyota I think did commit to doing three sports cars and we assume that is the 86 the super and then that new hyper car that they just announced um, who knows maybe those plans have changed or whatever so you know if it's too cheap then you know it's like well why would anyone buy an 86 anymore I mean very few people buy new ones anymore anyway you know it's a car that a lot of people just buy used. But anyway, uh, interesting to hear that about the uh, the Supra there. A couple other little things. Uh, one other thing about the uh, Supra at Goodwood there is supposedly they, uh, people that were looking at it said it had the same exact brake calipers as the new BMW 5 Series. Um, the rotors might be different sizing. I'm not sure. But also kind of interesting. They're using a lot of BMW parts bin stuff for this Toyota Supra. Uh, I know Toyota seems to be tuning it and stuff, uh, but it seems like it's going to be a lot of BMW stuff. BMW interior, BMW mechanicals, um, just basically a Toyota body is what it's sounding like. Again, we'll have to see. Um, some other interesting news though. Uh, Auto Guide has discovered some very interesting uh, patents that were uh, supposedly submitted by Ferrari. And so this patent is for a four-cylinder engine with an electric turbo, which a few other companies have dabbled with but this one is completely different so the interesting uh, thing about it um, is that it describes a turbine that's placed inside the exhaust duct and that doesn't have any kind of mechanical connection to a compressor but instead powers an electric generator um, that stores that electricity that's made and then that electricity powers an electric drive motor so that makes it a hybrid uh, whatever you know this engine would go into would be a hybrid vehicle but it continues on here and says um, the putting the turbine into the exhaust uh, area there actually changes the sound of the engine which is something we already know from you know regular turbos but the way that it's placed this turbine placed and where it's placed in the exhaust dock there um, it can uh, you know spin the faster it spins the higher pitch the engine sound gets supposedly and so um, you know in addition to this turbine thing just improving efficiency with an electric turbo type of deal um, it's also going to allow for very advanced tuning of sounds um, and so um, basically uh, the way that this was described is it's kind of like an exhaust valve except instead of it being open and closed it's like you can have a million different variations of how you tune that sound and how much of it comes out I mean you, and they even said that you can slow it down in order to customize the sound to even be lower pitched um, so really interesting manipulation of exhaust gases in order to make whatever sound they want to make out of this four cylinder um, which is pretty crazy but they said that even if they did slow down that turbine it wouldn't hurt the performance of the vehicle because um, you would have those the electric energy that was generated from that turbine and that stored energy could compensate for whatever reduction in performance from slowing down that turbine would create um, therefore evening it out 
so that you can still customize the sound while still maintaining the same performance, uh, which sounds very complicated, but very ingenious at the same time. And um, so the big question is, why is Ferrari developing a four cylinder, even if it is, you know, a really sweet, crazy sounding, uh, you know, hybrid version? Now, I mean, this could be something that potentially goes into their SUV, um, or it could be something, um, you know, Ferrari de develops engines that eventually end up in Alfa Romeo's, Maserati, so it could be something for those brands. Um, there's also still the rumors on and off about Ferrari doing a Dino, which would be a baby more affordable Ferrari, um, and that this could be the engine for that. Uh, I feel like that would make it really tough. I feel like most people would assume that if they were going to do a, a Ferrari Dino, they would put probably the Alfa Romeo Quadrifolio's, you know, 505 horsepower V6 in there instead. Dead. So, I mean, we'll just have to wait and see, you know, if something, I mean, lots of uh, companies file patents all the time and never use them. So who knows, but this is a very interesting idea. And so anyway, uh, cool to see that. And it also wouldn't be um, crazy for them to do a four, uh, four cylinder because in Ferrari's history in the fifties, they did actually use four cylinders. So there's a historical justification for going to a four cylinder, although I'm sure it would upset a lot of people still. Anyway, another thing that was very interesting, um, this auto car uh, spoke with Nissan's head designer about the next gen GTR. And we've been hearing a lot about the new GTR ever since uh, the past couple of weeks here. Um, but he admitted actually that the, their team hasn't started working on actually developing or engineering the next gen GTR simply because they haven't finalized the design. And they say that, you know, until a design is finalized, they can't really, you know, decide what they're going to do engine wise and drive wise and all the engineering stuff that goes into that. Um, but apparently uh, when his designers bring him design sketches for the next uh, GTR, he tells them less wing, more brick. And he, he kept using this word brick in this interview, which is really bizarre. So he said their goal is for it to be the fastest super sports car in the world by playing the advanced technology game. But he said that doesn't necessarily mean hybrid. So we'll have to wait and see what that uh, turns out to mean. Could be active aero or something like that as well. Who knows? Um, but he also continued on and said the car's visual mass and the audacity um, will needs to convey that it's an animal. It has to be imposing and excessive. It's the world's fastest brick, really. So I'm not sure why he keeps saying brick or maybe, I don't know if it just, it's a, you know, not a flattering term, you know, <laughs> here in the English language, really. So to say it's a brick is kind of strange um, because I'm sure it'll be aerodynamic. I'm sure, uh, you know, bricks just, it, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit. So anyway, but he said it's uh, it's a brick. And um, yeah, so anyway, we'll have to wait and see what happens with that next-gen GTR. But do not hold your breath. Sounds like it's several, several years away if they haven't even finalized the design, let alone engineering. And you know how, you know, the Japanese car companies, they really take a while to engineer stuff to make sure it's perfect. Look at the Supra. Look at, you know, the long development times for a lot of these vehicles. So um, you know, maybe five years from now, you know, it'll be a new GTR or something. Uh, so anyway, interesting to see that. Another very fast brick um, that might be coming is the Jeep Grand Wagoneer Trackhawk. So um, the regular Grand Wagoneer, that one won't even start being built until sometime in around like 2020, I think is when the factory will be ready to start building those. Um, but a more powerful version um, is at least being considered because um, there was a document discovered by Bozzi at Tatravaric, or I don't know how to say his last name, Tatarovic maybe is how you say it. Anyway, he discovered an internal ZF document talking about the vehicle and its use Use of the 8HP 95X transmission, which is a variation of the transmission currently used in the Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. Um, so maybe just a longer uh, version, you know, some type of variation to accommodate the longer uh, body style of the Grand Wagoneer here. Um, anyway, the document also shows it'll supposedly have 717 horsepower, um, which is interesting. And um, also, you know, it's just, it's it's also just because there's a document about it doesn't mean it's actually going to happen because supposedly there was a document that surfaced about a Chrysler 300 Hellcat and that never happened. Um, I guess technically it could still happen since the 300 hasn't been discontinued yet. Um, but yeah, so anyway, uh, we'll have to see, you know, if something turns up for the Grand Wagoneer. Um, but anyway, interesting to see that. And there's some interesting spy pictures this week that came out. Uh, the first set of pictures here from my spy photographer, Brian Williams. Um, and it's of the Civic Type R, which appears to be testing a refresh already. It's mild. It's just basically a change to the front end. That's, you know, seems pretty mild and also the back end. Um, now this could also 
also potentially be a special edition or some kind of other trim level and that's what the changes are for um, but you can see there's more complexity there in the front uh, air intakes and uh, there's also more com complexity out back with the rear faux vents which instead of having the large fake vents there seem to maybe have something to break them up a little bit so it's not quite as open there um, also there was one that was spied with a smaller wing which I don't have pictures of unfortunately my spy photographer didn't have pictures of those um, just of this other one but anyway there was one also spied with a smaller wing um, and so it's similar to the wing on the Civic SI uh, just on the hatchback there and so that would be nice if they're actually entertaining the idea of doing a small winged Type R for those that don't want the huge wing. Subaru's offered that for many years with the WRX STI Limited. You can get it with a huge wing or a smaller one and I think that that's that makes a lot of sense and so hopefully they do offer that because um, I think that would you know that wing kind of keeps some people away from the Type R and if you kind of get rid of that you might open up some more sales there. Now, but anyway, interesting to see them testing those. I'm guessing they'll be ready for the 2019 model year. Um, I don't think anyone's really expecting a refresh of the you know, Type R this soon, but uh, we'll have to see. Uh, anyway, interesting to see that. The 2020 Subaru Legacy was spied again as well, but this time, you know, a couple weeks ago, it had much heavier camo on it. Now it's just basically a wrap, um, and you can see that uh, it's going to be an evolutionary uh, you know, design change. It's a mix of really the new Impreza and the current Legacy, it looks like. Um, and so it'll probably be on this new Subaru. Subaru Global Platform, um, and it's also previously been reported it's going to have a new direct injected version of the 2.5 liter uh, flat 4, and there's also most likely going to be a 2 liter turbo motor that's going to replace the 6 cylinder um, for better fuel economy. Um, whether that is the you know new turbo 4 from the Subaru Ascent, which is you know not super high on horsepower, but you know fairly torquey, or maybe they'll return to the Legacy GT and do one with the Deborah X's uh, 2 liter turbo that would be very cool um, but uh, we'll have to wait and see you know, but a new legacy GT would be really really cool um, and also interesting on this one is it had hidden exhaust tips there aren't any cutouts in the bumper for an exhaust uh, pretty sure this isn't like any kind of all-electric version it's most likely just the base one that has uh, you know an exhaust tip that's just hidden and you know not worth showing off or something um, and anyway so this will probably I mean it looks pretty much done I mean I'm guessing this should be revealed early next year maybe even late this year as possible and anyway interesting Interesting to see that. The Audi RS Q8 was spied yet again. It seems like we're seeing these Audis testing just about every week. This week it was going around the Nurburgring though. Still looks very aggressive. Still, you know, should be very, very fast. Um, and it shouldn't be too much longer till we, till we see a full reveal because it looks, again, pretty much done. But we haven't even gotten the official SQ8 yet. We just have the regular Q8 that's been revealed. So we have to wait for the S version to be revealed. And then I'm sure the RS version will come a little bit later. So maybe a little ways off. Maybe Geneva, you know, next spring. Or, or something like that. But anyway, cool to see that. For some official Audi news though, the new uh, 2019 TT was revealed. It's modelly refreshed here, the TT and the TTS. You can see it's got a reshaped grille, a more aggressive front uh, bumper and also a rear bumper has been uh, reworked with those little uh, fake vents that look cool. Uh, also has some reworked side skirts and some new wheels. Um, there's also new colors. Uh, there's turbo blue and pulse orange. And um, this was a European press release. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure how much of this stuff's gonna translate to America here, but um, in Europe, the regular TT still gets two differently tuned turbocharged four cylinders you can have available. One is 197 horsepower and the other one's 245. And you can still get it over there with uh, front wheel drive or all wheel drive and a manual is still offered on the front wheel drive version. Here in the States though, we currently get a 220 horsepower quattro all wheel drive version and that's it, only automatic too. Um, so I'm not sure, maybe they'll reintroduce the manual, but I'm not holding my breath for that. I think most likely We'll probably get the more powerful motor, is my guess, 245 horsepower with the automatic standard. Um, but maybe we'll get both. We'll have to see. Um also, some other things here is that uh, there's also a new uh, seven-speed uh, dual-clutch automatic that they're introducing in these as well for the S-Tronic. Um, and uh, so the TTS uh, gets 306 horsepower now and 295 pound-feet of torque. And there's also standard... Um, dual clutch auto in that and the all-wheel drive too. Um, and the TTS will do, this new one will do zero to 60 in four and a half seconds. Also, all TTs now get the standard Audi virtual cockpit, which is a nice little improvement there. And the virtual cockpit, supposedly, they didn't show any pictures of it, but it's supposedly been redesigned uh, just with the graphics and stuff, I guess, a little bit. So, and they also say there's a new classic and infotainment mode and also a sport mode um, for the display, which is cool. Uh, also, there's gonna be two new special editions here for the TT. 
Um, there's an S-Line competition version of the regular TT, which gives you the S-Line exterior um, and that sports screen on the virtual cockpit and contrast stitching, make it a little bit sportier. I think you also get those Audi logos on the quarter panels and stuff. But the cooler edition is there's a new 20 years anniversary edition, which celebrates uh, the original TT concept car. Um, and so that's going to be available in either aero gray or nano gray. Um, and you see it has this brown interior, including uh, the steering wheel and shifter, which is much like the car from the 90s, uh, you know, that had those uh, also colored the same as the uh, seats. Um, it also has the same baseball stitch type leather uh, for the stitching like they introduced uh, back in the late 90s there on the TT, which is really cool. It's not quite as thick as the original uh, stitching was. That was like actual like catcher's mitt thick stitching. This is, uh, you know, a little bit finer, but still the same type of design, which I actually personally always loved that. I thought that was really cool. And so it's cool they're bringing that back. Um, and so this one sounds like the one to get. It's also got a few other cool little touches. The most notable one though is Matrix OLED taillights that are exclusive to this uh, edition of the TT um, and look really, really cool. And I'm guessing, you know, kind of hint at a future next gen, fully next gen version of the TT possibly. Um, Sadly, though, um, these taillights and the whole uh, special edition are going to be hard to get. There's only going to be 999 made worldwide, and only 80 of them are coming to the United States, or at least America, they said. I'm not sure if that's North North America. You know, it might include Canada. I'm not sure, but 80 for the continent, at least. So that's just crazy. Uh, but anyway, they're going to be available next year, and so anyway, cool to see that. Noble has shown off the exterior for the new M500 at Goodwood this past week. And um, so they have the M600 currently, and they say this is going to be a like baby brother to the M600, be a, a little more affordable and not quite as fast. Um, they're saying it's not drivable yet either. This is just uh, basically a rolling um, shell just to kind of show the you know design of it um, and not actually drivable. But they say it will use a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 from the Ford GT, also from the Ford F-150. <laughs> you know, but in this tune, they're saying it's going to do 550 horsepower. Um, and another interesting thing is it looks like it actually uses the same exact headlights as a C7 Corvette. And so because of that, this actually, to me at least, looks like just a mid-engine Corvette before GM revealed one. Um, you know, it's kind of like some of the renderings, honestly, we've seen for a mid-engine Corvette look just like this, except this is Noble, a little, you know, UK British car company and not the actual, um, you know, mid-engine Corvette. But anyway, uh, cool to see that. Speaking of the Ford GT, though, uh, the Motor Authority uh, is reporting that supposedly Ford is going to be opening orders um, for the 2019 model year of the Ford GT um, in the fourth quarter of this year, so towards the end of this year, the last few months. Um, and this will be the third year of the four year production run that Ford committed to. You know, they're doing 1,000 cars, 250 each year. Um, and it's the same application process as before, where they kind of judge how good of a Ford ambassador you would be um, as far as, you know, your social media following, um, your Ford collection you currently have your Ford uh, purchasing history in the past, all that type of stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, so cool there, you know, opening it up. So now people that weren't able to get one in the first two model years here, you can uh, reapply and maybe get, you know, get approved for the next year here. Um, there's also probably going to be a Heritage Edition as well. And this one would commemorate the 1968 um, GT40 win, which would mean it would be a Golf livery. I will have to see if that uh, turns out to be the case that hasn't been shown or anything, but just, you know, speculation. Um, but anyway, cool to hear that. Other Ford news at Lincoln Act actually is the Lincoln Corsair was spied, which is the replacement for the MKC. And um, it's going to be based on the same platform as the new Escape. And we've seen these spied a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but this one that was spied is actually the PHEV version, it seems like. And... Um you know, the whole design basically looks uh, pretty similar to the larger, you know, the Nautilus and um, the Aviator that was spy that we still haven't officially seen yet, and the Navigator and stuff, of course. Um, and, you know, same thing goes out back, uh, you know, similar type of look, uh, pretty consistent with the current MKC. And actually, interestingly enough, um, this was sp spied in Arizona, and a viewer in Arizona actually spied this running around. His name's uh, Raziel, I believe is how you pronounce it, and he spied it on the road, but in his pictures, the coverage for the taillights aren't on. Uh, and so you can see the taillights look pretty similar to what you see on the MKC currently. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. Obviously, still very camouflaged, so hard to tell for sure. Um, but anyway, thanks to him for snapping those, and really cool to have uh, that uh, you know, spied there. Um, another viewer, um, James Anderson, spied the Mercedes A-Class AMG, one of the AMG versions. We've heard there's like a 35 and a 45 uh, both coming. But anyway, he spied this in the mountains of Colorado um, and got uh, several pictures of it. So really awesome that he was able to snap these 
these pictures here. Um, it looks very sporty. We've seen the A-Class spied over in Europe and stuff, but cool to see it here in the States. And it's also got a really good look. He got a really good shot of the rear bumper. You can see the nice uh, sporty cutouts to it there. Looks like it's going to be, uh, you know, pretty cool looking, uh, very stylistic there, especially in the back. Um, so anyway, cool to see that. And thanks once again to James. Also, the 2020 Kia Soul was spied. Um, and uh, this is the turbo version, but, but this was actually taken by uh, Brian Williams as well. And it looks really cool up front there. Uh, you know, you got the slim accent lights, look very Star Wars inspired. But you can see that grill piece. I believe that's an actual LED strip going across the grill. So if that whole thing illuminates, that is going to look so cool at night um, and really, really futuristic. I don't know, you know, if that will actually light up or if that's just a, you know, very uh, cleverly designed chrome piece that looks like LED uh, or what. But anyway, that is really sweet. The back end looks like an evol evolutionary version of the current vehicle, but also looks very cool. You can see the center mounted exhaust tips there, um, which kind of hint that this is the turbo version. As far as the engine, it'll almost certainly use the 1.6 liter turbo motor since that's what the uh, brand new Veloster is also using. Um, so chances are that'll carry over here to the new version. Um, and that's likely that they do debut at the LA Auto Show, um, although, you know, it could be some other time, but that seems most likely. So anyway, cool to see that. There's also a report from Auto Guide this past week um, about the 2019 model year for the Nissan Leaf, and that it's going to probably get an E Plus uh, model. So they were sat down with Nissan's head of EV marketing and sales strategy, who confirmed this E Plus model, um, and he's and they didn't give any specific numbers. Um, so they, but the, all the stuff that's uh, been leaked out and all the rumors and stuff suggests it's going to use a 60 kilowatt hour battery um, and also have a more powerful motor to go along with that for about 200 horsepower. Um, for this faster EV version. Um, and so anyway, other things here about it. Um, he, did, he also said it's going to have more range, of course, in the E plus version, but he didn't say how much more. Uh, but again, the rumors and the uh, current um, line of thinking over on the Nissan Leaf forums uh, suggest it'll probably be about 225 miles of range, could be more or less, we'll have to see. Uh, but that would basically put it right in line with the base model Tesla Model 3 and also the Chevy Bolt um, with its slightly higher, I think, 238 mile range. Um, but anyway, that's also likely to debut at the LA Auto Show, that would certainly make the most sense considering the market um, for EVs is much stronger in LA. Um, so anyway, interesting to see that. The last bit of news this week is Acura has uh, detailed the refresh for the 2019 MDX here. And so we already knew about the A-Spec package that was already revealed um, at the New York Auto Show, uh, you know, this this spring um, and its sportier looks, which, you know, are very cool. But the one thing um, that's uh, is a new announcement here is uh, from the sport hybrid version, um, it had an adaptive uh, active damper system for the suspension. That now is going to be available on the non sport hybrid versions as well. So you can get that in regular MDXs to uh, customize the ride feel which is really cool. There's also some new colors available, including Apex Blue Pearl, which is an exclusive color for the A-Spec version, uh, Majestic Black Pearl, Performance Red, Canyon Bronze Metallic, and Gunmetal Metallic. Uh, there's also in the interior a new Desert Olive Ash Wood Trim that's available, and uh, Contrast Stitching, and you get the A-Spec, of course, that gives you the Alcantara inserts there and a lot sportier look to the interior. Um, there's also standard four-way power lumbar on front seats as well, I believe both front seats, which is great. Um, um, and they also said they've made a couple minor little changes too. Like they said, the uh, start-stop function has been improved for faster uh, starting and smoother starts. And, um, and also the automatic transmission has been retuned for smoother starts from a stop as well, which is, uh, you know, always appreciated. Um, but yeah, so it sounds like a pretty good little update there. But that's it for all the news this week, guys. Let me know your thoughts and everything in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Take care.